So I took a trip to Malta and I met up with Pedro to do a tech only diving trip. So we connected with a local tech diving shop called TechWise and it's in St. Julian's. What's up, Pedro? Before heading into the water, we had to get our gear situated. So once we got our equipment all situated and dialed in, um, we actually had to get weights from the shop. And as a safety precaution, which I really agree with their approach, they take you to their shallow water um, area where they kind of do their confined water dives. They want to make sure that you have proper trim and proper buoyancy. And quite honestly, they want to also just check out if you know how to dive. Once we got that dialed in, we did a little dive outside of their little lagoon, went into the open water, and we did a shallow dive to about 60 feet. Uh, visibility here is actually amazing. As you can see, there's lots of grass and rock around. Not a whole lot of marine life literally just really small fish and the reason for that is uh, the people of Malta completely have overfished their uh, waters so there's really nothing large left over except for these tiny tiny little water temperature um, in Malta fish that was were probably very like warm an inch, inch at and the a surface half. it was uh, mid 70s and when you hit the thermocline it was a balmy 65-ish. I think the coldest dive we ever did throughout the entire week actually dropped down to 62. And and funny enough, when we actually felt that, I felt, wow, that this is getting a little cold. Um, I did one dive without a hood at all and uh, thought to myself, I'm not going to do that again because even though it was low 60s, I still the felt The really, HMS really Miori was actually sunk by the Germans in World War II. It was sunk, I believe, close to the Bay of uh, Valletta, or Valletta, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. It's probably Valletta. And um, word is that after World War II, um, they lifted it from its bombing point and sunk it in the Valletta Harbor. Um, it's an easy dive, it sits at like 50 feet max. So it's, it's a perfect introduction to wrecks for um, so open the water, water in um, Malta is really, really clear. I would definitely say that visibility here in Malta uh, for all the dives that we did um, was at least, you know, at least 60, 70 feet of viz. Um, in some locations, there were probably over 100 feet of it. Um, definitely way more marine life in all of the wrecks that we visited here in, in uh, Malta. And um, if you were just diving in open water, there was literally no fish at all. So the very first day was quite an interesting dive. Uh, sad that there's no marine life around the um, uh, Malta itself, but really cool that there's so many shipwrecks. Um, I believe when we were talking to the guys at the shop, they had indicated that Malta has 178 uh, shipwrecks through both the main island of Malta and the sister island, which is Gozo. Now, that said, uh, one thing that we were told was they were filming the movie, one of the Mr. Bean movies, and so the shipwrecks that they had intended for us to dive were actually closed off to the public because they were filming those wrecks. So 
Um, in a way, I was kind of glad I didn't bring my rebreather because we couldn't dive the wrecks that I had intended to dive. And so for this trip, uh, I dove open circuit, uh, mainly because I'm diving with Pedro, who is not rebreather certified. And so now the shipwreck itself, the Miori, is not very intact. It is probably the equivalent of um, the Ruby E that we have here in San Diego. Basically, the sheet metal is paper thin. It's advised not to do any type of penetration. Uh, there is some, well, there are a few swim throughs that you can do, but you definitely don't want to do any type of serious penetration um, at this rack because you risk the serious um, possibility of uh, the sheet metal falling on top, on top of you, literally just collapsing. So because we were in uh, our doubles, uh, we literally had an hour and a half dive in 50 feet of water. So here we are kind of swimming back to the lagoon that the dive shop is located. And again, not a lot of large fish. There's just a bunch of smaller type of fish here and there. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is. We've run across this multiple times. After each day of diving, we walked back to our uh, VRBO and we drank a few pints watched a bunch of uh, football games. Uh, as you know, the Euro um, tournament is going on. And so uh, the Europeans love their soccer or their football. And it didn't matter who was playing. It was like a big, big celebration in the main square. All right. So because they were filming Mr. Bean in the uh, main island of Malta, we couldn't do any of the dives uh, because they were filming on the shoreline for where uh, you can actually take um, or do your setup. So instead, we had to do all our dives during the week in Gozo. So we took the ferry from Malta to Gozo, which isn't very far and we can literally see the island. On, on either side. So if you're in Gozo, you can see Malta. And if you're on Malta, you can see Gozo. So it's not a very far drive. So here is where we did all our dives. There's three major wrecks here. Actually, there's four major wrecks here. They're called the Zindi, the MV Caruela, the MV... Because we're in DPV, I only got a chance to videotape the, uh, the Caruela. MV. Uh, we were literally we just the hepatitis. DPV to <laughs> Zindi, the MV Carwela, and then Camino Land. So no real time to actually stop and do any uh, recording. So this is where we set up our dives. Um, it's this little rocky platform. You lay your tanks down at the bottom here and uh, you jump into the water, attach your tanks, and then you take off. So after the dive, we got back onto the ferry, headed towards Gozo, and as you can see, surf is really starting to pick up. So here's our little uh, VRBO just up the street from the marina. So we had to walk up the street. It was actually quite a steep hill. Every time we'd walk up, we got a little winded. So we headed down, and on our third day there, since we couldn't dive because the surf was so big, we decided to uh, rent this quad. So we toured the entire island. I actually put my life at risk and allowed Pedro to drive us around. Actually, it wasn't too bad. Um, if you didn't know, Malta is uh, an ex-British colony, so you drive so, on the So uh, this side, was my view is a little off during the uh, cruise or the tour around the island. Still fun. Uh, actually, it was a lot of fun. We got to cruise around on on this uh, quad, and we literally went all over the the entire island. 
got to visit all the various different little cities. Here's a cool little horse-drawn carriage. Actually, there's quite a few horses everywhere. Beaches everywhere. So occasionally we'd make a stop, have a cerveza, and would just carry on. We did go to the outskirts too, sort of like the farm country, and it was actually really cool. Small roads, different little plots here and there, but um, not a lot of cars. So this is us heading into, I think, which is a pretty major town called Valletta. This is just on the outskirts of Valletta, heading in from the, uh, the farm country into the main town. Uh, obviously, it's an island, so there's beautiful beaches everywhere you stop. I wasn't kidding about the surf and swell being fairly large. I mean, usually the Mediterranean is fairly calm and uh, there was definitely no way for us to do any diving that day. We're now in the old town of Valletta. Very cool. Totally like it. In 300 meters, slight left onto Zac Pinto. It did get pretty hot at certain points during the day, and so we did a quick pit stop, found a cool little outgrove, and Pedro jumped in to cool off. All right, so that evening of cruising around on the quad, we found a beautiful marina where there were a bunch of super yachts and indulged ourselves in a beautiful steak dinner. All right, so on the fourth day of diving, we attempted to find the hepateus and our dive guide couldn't find it. So we attempted a different dive to the Carwela, which definitely didn't disappoint. We didn't have DPVs, which I kind of thought we were going to use this next day because um, couldn't find the shipwrecks the day prior. 
and uh, basically aborted. So we were using the same guide and I was kind of hoping we were going to use DPVs, but um, we ended up not needing them. Obviously we, we came right up to the Caruela. This is where we staged our bottles and we conducted the remainder of the dive within the ship. So here we are swimming into the first stage where you'll see the staircase here and then there's another set of uh, staircases right behind it which just goes down to the lower level. A fantastic dive. Visibility is amazing by the way. Uh, it was always a hundred plus feet of this. Lots of great swim throughs. There was pretty much uh, an exit for every room we went into. There's probably like two, three different options. Uh, a really neat dive and we were stoked about it. At the screws, if I remember correctly, um, we're at 140 feet. There was some marine life, but like I said earlier, um, if you come to Malta expecting marine life and you want to take pictures of marine life, you're going to be very disappointed because there's not a lot of marine life whatsoever. The, the locals have overfished the entire area and there's just nothing around. So after hanging out at the screws, we went back to our deco bottles where we staged them and uh, we ended up going through our deco procedure and into the dive. But it, it was a fantastic dive. Love the viz here. I, I really wish we had shipwrecks, this many shipwrecks in San Diego. Um, obviously there's a ton of ships available and they're always decommissioning uh, military ships. Um, basically yearly, but instead of scrapping them, I wish they would just sink them so that we can dive them. So now we headed back into the ship and uh, dropped down to the lower level, um, basically the belly level, I guess, 
where you can see the very bottom of the ship and uh, we went back up the stairs this time. Very, very cool uh, dive. I, I believe this is probably one of the more famous shipwrecks in all of Malta, predominantly because of the staircase and it, it was a really cool dive. Um, everyone did a fantastic job of not silting uh, any of the rooms out and so uh, we were able to get some great video. This would have been a great uh, wreck to have my 360 camera, but I didn't end up bringing it with me, mainly because I'm just gonna be honest with you, I'm not very impressed with the uh, 360 camera, but maybe I haven't given it a shot. Um, I didn't wanna take a chance at Malta, so I, I chose not to bring it. It was a very, very cool dive, and I love the visibility. Um, I think I mentioned it earlier, but the water temperatures were at the low um, 60s. I don't think it ever dropped in the 50s at all. So having a dry suit really, really helped. And because we were doing hour and a half, almost two hour dives, the P-valve comes in really, really handy.
Back to our stage bottles. Everyone retrieved their individuals. Um, oh, by the way, uh, we pretty much only dove 50% um, in our deco bottles. Apparently that is just a thing that they do at this dive shop. Um, they always dive 30 minutes TTS and everyone uses 50%. They're not too keen on 100%. All right, so this was our final dive day. And this time around, we got to use DPVs and we we're going to Gozo, like I said, because they were filming Mr. Bean. And so we were going to attempt the hepatitis again. The hepatitis boat is what the locals call it. So took the ferry over, went to the same prep spot and attempted the dive. Here we are chilling. the uh, other ferry returning to Malta while we were heading towards Gozo. And this time we were on the Greek boat. It's a, it was a smaller ferry and everyone kind of joked, but this was the best dive of the trip. Love the visibility, just approaching the Hepatitis. Um, we were, went to the bow where we staged our uh, bottles and also staged our DPVs and then conducted the remainder of the dive on the inside of the ship. So the, the Hepatitis is an oil tanker, a beautiful oil tanker. So here we are staging our deco bottles and our DPVs, and then we headed towards penetrating the ship. So the Hepatitis had a lot of rooms that you can swim through. Um, some corridors were a lot tighter than others, so I was in side mount, so um, detaching a tank made it a lot easier to swim through. Uh, but I, I'm following Pedro, and he's on the twin set, so he was able to squeeze through some of the tighter um, um, openings where I had to detach my uh, um, my tank because you know when you when you're flying side mount you're a little wider than you are using back mount but you can easily remedy that by removing uh, the tank from your from your waist clip and then uh, um, rotating in the bottle in front of you and uh, you're able to squeeze through a, a smaller uh, passageway
So now we're closer to uh, the aft section of the uh, ship and we go into this little side opening and uh, make our way through additional rooms that that um, are just awesome. A lot tighter for sure. Finally made our way out to the upper deck of the ship and we began to swim towards the bow where we staged our DPVs and our deco bottles. I'm definitely coming back to Malta, but next time I'm going to bring my rebreather to do these amazing shipwrecks. Hope to see you down below.